All right, wonderful. This one is a pretty interesting one, trim left. We're gonna see one in a little bit that's kind of like trim left and right at the same time, but focusing on this, you implement trim left by giving it a string and then it returns that string with the white space in the beginning removed. So you're trimming white space from the beginning. And here in the example, it shows you it shows you hello world. It has this one has white space at the beginning and the end, and they're showing you that the white space at the end is all right. It's just going to have the the white space at the beginning removed. So let's take the challenge. Uh, here are some tests for this. So you can see this one is any. They're all any because we have to start with here. So uh, where do you think we should start? We have we definitely need a generic of some kind. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> we. So like, it's it's definitely going to use the conditional types because that's one thing you have you know out of the gate because it like so we can I'll, I'll start you off actually we'll go on the next line t extends and then there's going to be like something here you know uh, th so here's the true yep. the true block oops uh, and false there we go. So there's true and there's there's the false section. So we're going to do something here like basically we need to grab, we need to match on something. So there's like kind of a matching syntax that we could use. And we could say like, uh, I'll give you that one. We could match on that and then. So that's just matching a, just like an a empty string. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, uh -huh, a literal empty string. And then I suppose you got the, the infer statement mm -hmm. uh, or the infer keyword right so then pick out something from from this yes um so i guess we could do infer uh, a and then output that right um but this will only pick out one character well, well let's see only, i think yeah one yeah yeah and look it passed this test so a2 is str as it should be it t took off the string so yeah there's other we have we have these guys here um we're, so <laughs> I love that we're like right out of the gate. So this is uh, there are more in this series, but up under nine, this is our first one together tonight, and we're already going to hit recursion. So we do need to lop off more characters <laughs> from the rest of A. Uh, I'm going to rename this to you just just to just to do it. Um, so let's. How do you, I guess how do you iterate? Like, well, not iterate, but how do you say that oh, I've got multiple of these? Like. Right, no, so totally, yeah. The yeah. way we'll do it in this case um, is with recursion. Oh, I see it. So let's go check one. Yeah, perfect. So this one that was passing A2 before is still passing, but this guy here, which has any number of strings, and we can put any number of strings before there, and it'll continue to pass uh, A3. Yeah. So that's okay. the first thing. And, uh, okay, so for these ones, mm -hmm. you can use just a discriminated union for this. Exactly. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Yeah, we got them. We got it. That's great. One one thing that a lot of people do is they'll pull this out yeah. into some other kind of thing. There's actually one more in this list. There's like, uh, what is it, like slash R or something for line return? I don't know. Uh -huh. Carriage return. But anywho, uh, there's no test for that, so whatever. But that's that. So I also looked online for other alternatives for how other people solve this. And this this one here was another sort of similar example. Let's here, I'll disable this one here and we can take a look at it. So it does pass all the tests. And it puts the generic constraint. Yeah, definitely. It it puts the generic constraint up here. We didn't need to do that or do that. I think it's pretty good to do usually. And then it takes out, so A is going to pull the first character and B will pull all remaining characters. Oops. And then it's kind of checking, it's doing that white space check in here. Yeah. I think it's a little overbearing, like you don't need to do this level, you know, this much stuff because you can just do it in one go. But that was the other example well, of how I any, found it. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have nested ternaries, it's always like confusing. And it always leads to some degree of confusion where you have to do all the logic in, in your brain. I worry um, sometimes that I've spent I spent too much time looking at this TypeScript stuff because it, it's, it's less icky to me now that I've seen so much of it. There are some of these challenges that have like literally 10 nested yeah. ternaries. But uh, yeah, we'll see. All right, on to the next one. <laughs>